Hello everybody, welcome to video number 16 in my Richard Lehman horror novel review series. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a while since the last one, but sometimes life gets in the way a little bit. But I am back with 2000's The Travelling Vampire Show. So let me begin as I usually begin with the cover art, which I always complain about this when I talk about these later editions of his books. But his name is way too big because it means that the picture has to be squashed. And this is another great painting by Steve Crisp, but you just really can't see the detail inside the hearse. And it's a shame, but there you go. It's 442 pages long, and the synopsis is a pretty long one, so <clears throat> let me get on and read it. It says, It is a day like any other in the hot August of 1963. Sleepy little Granville holds few excitements for three teenagers with time on their hands, except for the posters. They've appeared on the streets overnight, and for Dwight, Rusty, and Slim, the message is irresistible. The travelling vampire show is coming to town. Not that getting in is going to be easy. For a start, the show is only for over 18s, and they can't pass for that. And the performance begins at midnight, way past their curfew. There is also the 10 bucks admission fee. But what's to stop them taking off for Jenks Field, the spooky venue for the show, and watching the crew set up? Maybe they can catch a glimpse of gorgeous Valeria, billed as the only known vampire in captivity. There can't be any harm in that, can there? The Travelling Vampire Show is the story of what happens to Dwight, Rusty and Slim on the day they hike to Jenks Field. Three teenagers who go where they shouldn't go, do what they shouldn't do, and run into big trouble. And then you've got a little picture of a flyer there for the vampire show. Right, so this was published in the year 2000. Lehman died in February 2001, and this book was awarded the Bram Stoker Award for Best Novel. I uh, could be wrong about this, but I think it was the third of his books to be nominated for that award after Flesh and, I think, Funland. But this is the only book that won the award. And I don't in any way want to diminish this book's achievement in winning that award, but I do think it was given in honour of the legacy that Richard Lehman had left behind after his death. Um, and he deserved that. He really deserved to be noted in that way for the massive contribution he had made to horror fiction in the 80s and 90s. So I'm happy that he did eventually win one of those awards. Onto this book, though, it's it's one of his more popular novels among his fans. It often appears in people's top ten, even top five lists. I've even seen people name this as their number one favourite novel by him. It's easy to see why it's an extremely likeable book. And it's, it's an unusual one for Richard Lehman, because the first 300 and something pages, it's not a horror novel, it's a coming-of-age story in the style of Stephen King's The Body, which was filmed as Stand By Me. But I want to begin by talking about how this book story is told. It's told in the first person narrative, which is a, for, for Lehman a rare technique. He would use it in five of his 35 novels. Uh, this one, Savage, Island, After Midnight, and Night in the Lonesome October. And all of those books I just mentioned are towards, were written towards the end of his career. Um, possibly because it's not easy, in my opinion, to sustain, it's, I should say it's not as easy to sustain interest with using the first person technique. You have to have a great command of the voice you've chosen to speak through. You have to somehow make a world interesting through only one perception of that world. King is very good at it. For example, Dolores Claiborne or Christine or a lot of his short fiction or The Body that I just mentioned. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption, there's another King first person, but you know, I love Richard Lehman, but characterization was never his strongest point. He was very plot driven. His characters tend to be wafer thin. And I'll be honest, going into this book, I was a little bit worried because Richard Lehman's teenage boys can be annoying at the best of times, even in a third person narrative when you don't have to deal with them much. But I thought, do I really want to spend 440 pages uh, in a story told through the eyes of a 16 year old Richard Lehman teenage boy? It's I had thought it's just going to be non-stop, you know, lust, sex, teenage sex fantasies, because his teenage boys are, sorry to get crude, but walking erections, basically. Um, very happy, though, to report that that's not what this ended up being. <clears throat> there are some scenes like that, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's it's not the dominant aspect to Dwight's character. Dwight is the, the kid who we who is telling the story. Uh, <clears throat> so story-wise, not a lot to say really about the the first part of the book. These three kids go off to Jenks Field to try to catch a glimpse of the Travelling Vampire show setting up. It doesn't pan out that way. They run into a bit of trouble, and that bit of trouble sets up 
the uh, events of the following 300 and odd pages, the coming of age part of the story. I guess there is a, a horror element to that part of the book, uh, a mystery that runs through it. But it is secondary to Lehman's main concern, which is depicting a friendship during a summer in the 1960s America. And for me, I massively romanticized 1960s America. I was born into 1980s England, which was in the northwest of England, which was grim time and a grim place. But all of my favorite fiction and films, well, not all, but most of it tends to be set in 1960s America because, I don't know, I just imagine it as a time of great freedom and a great time to be a kid. Uh, maybe I'm completely wrong, but it's how it exists in my imagination. And what I like about Lehman's book here is he very he paints quite faithfully, in my opinion, a teenage friendship during the summer. It at least reminded me of my own summers during the summer holidays. We get to see these three kids. It's Dwight and Rusty, a boy, slim as a girl. And we get to see them, you know, facing thing, teenage issues like love and lust and bullying and uh, teenage arguments. We get to see their friendship grow and evolve. We see them facing family troubles and taking shelter from those family troubles in in their friendships uh growing as people in the way that teenagers do you know not by listening to any kind of parental advice or adult advice but by just being with their own friends and learning from them and watching them and mimicking the things they like from them and rejecting the things they don't like i think layman did for, by his standards a very good job of showing that and tiny little details which uh for me personally, I just love like this one, maybe it wouldn't really resonate with anyone else, but it did with me. There's a scene where the two boys go to one of their houses and raid the fridge so, and cut enough pieces of cheese and just eat in a strip of cheese. Uh, it's stupid, maybe, but you know, I used to do that, too, with my friends. It's summer holidays. You'd come to one of their houses and even going inside your friend's house when the parents weren't there was its own mystery and it promised its own kind of uh, adventures and you'd go in the fridge and I don't know, I'm rambling, I know, but it, I just found it to be a really uh, nice little vignette of a, of a teenage summer. There's not a lot I can say negatively about that part of the book. Um, there are a couple of scenes which I felt were well I, actually when I first read them I thought they were silly there's one scene again I have to be a little bit crude here there's one scene involving um uh, Dwight the narrator and he's secretly in love with Slim the girl and I think we all had that situation when we were teenagers we all had a friend who we were secretly in love with and it was kind of wonderful but painful also to spend to be spend time with them to, to not be able to hug them kiss them whatever you wanted to do um and the, the, the crude scene I'm talking about involves him uh, losing control in his pants. Let me just put it like that. Uh, but then when I, I, I laughed when I read it, but then when I thought back, I never did anything like that. But when I thought back, I thought, yeah, it it can be that um, magical to uh, touch a girl for the first time who you're madly in love with. It's it's totally different as an adult to read these things. And so I can't criticize Lehman for that because I often call his writing juvenile and childish and teenage, but this isn't a case when it actually works that he perceives, Lehman himself seems to perceive the world as a teenage boy. Now that he's telling the story of a teenage boy, it kind of works in his favor. And when I thought about it more, I thought, actually, no, that's only seems silly to a grown man, to a married man, which is what I am now. But if I'd read it as a as a 16 year old boy back in the day, I pro I, that probably would have rung true for me. So, yeah, the first part of the book is just a series of scenes and uh, episodes in the lives of these teenagers. Very readable. A lot of uh, it can be moving sometimes. It can be funny. The last 120-something pages is the Travelling Vampire Show part of the story. And that part is a typical layman, but that's a compliment when I say that. Because it's so weird. That this Travelling Vampire Show that the whole narrative has been building up to, it had to have a pretty decent payoff because it's been promised for 300 pages. And if you're not into the coming-of-age thing, then you have been waiting a long time to get to it. So he did have to come up with something pretty damn spectacular. And I think he does. I it's unpredictable I didn't see it going in this direction I loved the very ending of the story the actual vampire part of it 
Um, not going to say anything more about that because if you haven't read it, I truly don't want to spoil the the traveling vampire show part of the story. But uh, stick with the book to get to it because it is a good payoff. Only really two negatives I could find to speak about with this one, both involving characters. Rusty has a younger sister whose name is Bitsy, and she's incredibly obnoxious. And I think that for the purpose she serves to the plot, Layman probably could have found a different way to move the story onwards without involving such an annoying character. Really, really distractingly annoying. And the second thing which drew me out of the story a bit is the... Uh, uh, Dwight's the narrator as an older sister-in-law. She's in her early 20s, and she's the one who gets him into the Travelling Vampire show. Uh, and she's depicted as this very responsible, very respectable uh, member of the family, albeit not a blood member of the family. But she's very trusted, and she's uh, very responsible, like I said. And it's just not believable that she would do any of this, that she would sneak these kids into this highly illegal and illicit vampire show against the parents' wishes at midnight, um, breaking all kinds of rules and laws to do this. She just wouldn't do it. And it's one of those things that drew me out of the story, a story that until that point had been extremely absorbing and I lost myself in it. And it's when, he, when Lehman does things like that, it, it is a book where more so than usual you don't want to be dragged out of it with improbable characterization and events because it's a book about immersing yourself in the atmosphere of the time again 60s america i mean there's wonderful little details in this book which uh mark the era i, I was i was uh, amused to see a, a mention of the trial and uh, execution of adolf eichmann which it seems to be a bit random in there, but then again, I thought, no, that's another very neat way of marking this very particular time in American history. Um, a reminder of the great freedom that these kids are enjoying and uh, this, the historical events that were going on at this time, which is clearly modeled on Lehman's own um, life, because he himself was 16 years old in 1963 when this book is set. So he, he's obviously um, remembering a lot about his own teenage years here. So I think uh, that's what I want to say mainly about this book. It's recommended. Certainly give it a read, especially now in the summer. This is a really good summer horror novel to read. But again, go into it with the realization that it's not a straightforward horror novel. Most of it is just a coming of age drama, really, but a very nicely told one and a very moving one for the most part. Uh, that's going to do it for this one, The Travelling Vampire Show from the year 2000. Thanks guys for watching this, if you did watch this far, and I hope it won't be so long before the next one. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you very much again for watching, bye for now.